Think about the feeling of warm sunlight on your skin, the gentle warmth that seeps into your body, bringing a sense of comfort and relaxation. It's a simple pleasure, yet profoundly impactful. Now, imagine the taste of your favorite food, the burst of flavors dancing on your taste buds, the satisfaction that comes with each bite. These sensory experiences are deeply personal and uniquely yours. These experiences, along with countless others, make up the tapestry of our consciousness. Every moment, every interaction, every thought contributes to the rich and intricate fabric of our inner world. But what exactly is consciousness and how does it arise? Is it merely the result of complex neural processes or is there something more profound at play? Consciousness is arguably the greatest mystery facing science today. Despite advances in neuroscience and psychology, we're still far from understanding the full scope of what it means to be conscious. It's the feeling of what it's like to be you, to experience the world around you and to have your own unique thoughts and feelings. It's the essence of your identity, the core of your being. For millennia, philosophers have pondered the nature of the mind and its relationship to the physical body. From Plato to Descartes, the quest to understand consciousness has been a central theme in the history of human thought. Today, scientists armed with powerful tools are beginning to unravel the secrets of consciousness. Advanced imaging techniques and computational models are providing new insights into how the brain functions. While a definitive answer remains elusive, the journey itself is filled with wonder and discovery. Each new finding brings us closer to understanding the profound nature of our own minds. The study of consciousness is not just about understanding what makes us human. It's about exploring the very essence of existence, the fundamental nature of reality. It has far-reaching implications for fields like medicine, artificial intelligence, and even our understanding of the universe itself. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of consciousness, we may unlock new possibilities for enhancing human life and expanding our knowledge of the cosmos. The quest to understand consciousness is not new. Ancient Greek philosophers like Plato and Aristotle grappled with the mind-body problem, debating whether the mind was separate from the body or an integral part of it. Centuries later, René Descartes, a prominent figure in the scientific revolution, proposed his famous idea of dualism. He argued that the mind and body were made of different substances interacting through the pineal gland in the brain. While dualism has largely fallen out of favor among scientists, it highlights the enduring challenge of explaining how physical matter can give rise to subjective experience. In the late 19th century, William James, the father of American psychology, offered a different perspective. He saw consciousness as a stream of thoughts, a continuous flow rather than a collection of discrete parts. This idea laid the groundwork for later theories that emphasized the dynamic and interconnected nature of conscious experience. Modern neuroscience has provided unprecedented insights into the biological basis of consciousness. With brain imaging techniques like fMRI and EEG, scientists can now observe brain activity in real time as people engage in different conscious experiences. While consciousness is not localized to a single brain region, certain areas appear to play crucial roles. The prefrontal cortex, located just behind the forehead, is involved in planning, decision-making and working memory, all essential aspects of conscious thought. The thalamus, a structure deep within the brain, acts as a relay station, integrating sensory information and sending it to other cortical areas. However, it's important to remember that correlation does not equal causation. Just because a brain area lights up during a particular task doesn't necessarily mean it's the sole cause of that experience. Consciousness likely arises from the complex interplay of multiple brain regions working in sync. Section 4. Building a Conscious Machine. Theories at play. In this section, we delve into the fascinating world of theories that attempt to unravel the enigma of consciousness. How does the brain, a complex network of neurons, give rise to the rich tapestry of subjective experience that defines our existence? 
while neuroscience provides a detailed map of the brain highlighting various regions and their functions, it doesn't fully explain how these biological processes translate into the phenomenon of consciousness. This is where various theories come into play, each offering a unique perspective on how our brains might generate conscious experience. One prominent theory is the Global Workspace Theory, or GWT. This theory proposes that consciousness arises when information is broadcast widely across the brain, making it available for various cognitive processes. Imagine a bustling newsroom where information is shared across different departments, allowing for coordinated action and decision-making. To visualize this, think of a stage where different actors, representing various brain regions, are performing their roles. Each actor has a specific part to play, but not all are in the spotlight at the same time. Consciousness, in this analogy, is like a spotlight that shines on certain actors, bringing them into the forefront of our awareness. This spotlight allows us to focus on specific thoughts, sensations or memories, making them accessible for further cognitive processing. Another influential theory is Integrated Information Theory, or IIT. This theory posits that consciousness is a fundamental property of any system that integrates information. According to IIT, the more information a system integrates, the more conscious it is. For instance, a highly interconnected network like the human brain would have a high level of integrated information and thus a high level of consciousness. This theory has profound implications for understanding not just human consciousness, but also the potential for consciousness in other systems. Interestingly, IIT has been used to argue that even simple systems like a thermostat might possess a basic form of consciousness. While this idea is still a topic of debate, it challenges our traditional notions of what it means to be conscious. Finally, we have the higher order thought or HOT theory. This theory suggests that consciousness arises from our ability to have thoughts about our thoughts. In other words, it's not just about having experiences, but also about being aware that we are having those experiences. This self-awareness, or metacognition, is seen as a hallmark of human consciousness. It allows us to reflect on our thoughts, evaluate our actions, and plan for the future. This ability to think about thinking is what sets us apart from other species. For example, being aware that you are thinking about consciousness right now is an example of a higher order thought. This recursive nature of thought is what gives rise to the rich inner life that we experience as conscious beings. As we continue to explore these theories, we move closer to understanding the profound mystery of consciousness and the potential for building truly conscious machines. Section 5, The Hard Problem, The Ever-Elusive Qualia. While these theories offer valuable frameworks, they struggle to address what philosopher David Chalmers famously dubbed the hard problem of consciousness. This problem is not just about understanding the mechanisms of the brain, but about grasping the essence of subjective experience. This problem centers around the subjective, qualitative nature of experience, often referred to as qualia. Qualia are the individual instances of subjective conscious experience. Qualia are the raw feels of experience, the redness of red, the sweetness of sugar, the bitterness of coffee, and the pain of a headache. They are the building blocks of our sensory world. The pain of a headache, for instance, is not just a signal sent to the brain, it is a deeply personal, subjective experience that is difficult to quantify or fully explain. While we can describe these experiences and correlate them with brain activity, mapping out which neurons fire when we see red or taste sweetness, the hard problem asks why they feel the way they do. Why do these neural activities give rise to the rich tapestry of subjective experience? Why isn't the experience of seeing red simply a matter of photons hitting our retinas and triggering a cascade of neural activity? Why does this physical process result in the vivid subjective sensation of redness? Why does it feel like something to experience redness at all? This feeling, this qualia, is what makes the hard problem so perplexing. The hard problem remains a major stumbling block in the science of consciousness. It challenges our understanding of how physical processes in the brain translate into the rich inner world of experience. 
Some scientists believe it's a question that science can eventually answer, that with enough research and technological advancement, we will uncover the secrets of qualia. While others argue that it might be forever beyond the reach of empirical investigation, they suggest that the subjective nature of qualia might be something that science, with its objective methods, can never fully grasp. This ongoing debate continues to fuel research and philosophical inquiry, pushing the boundaries of what we know about the mind and consciousness. Section 6. Beyond the Brain, Consciousness in the World the study of consciousness is not limited to the confines of the human skull. Researchers are also exploring the possibility of consciousness in other animals. Do dogs dream? Can octopuses solve problems consciously? These questions challenge our anthropocentric view of consciousness and raise ethical considerations about our treatment of other species. Furthermore, some philosophers and scientists are exploring the idea of panpsychism the view that consciousness is a fundamental property of the universe itself. While this idea might seem radical, it offers a potential solution to the hard problem by suggesting that consciousness is not something that emerges from matter, but rather a fundamental aspect of reality.